Thanks for stopping by for today's Paper Mischief. I'm Amy Sonneman, and today I'd like to share with you some fun finds that I was able to create with the Picket Fence Paper Glaze. The Paper Glaze is a mixed media paste that's smooth and easy to use, and it has this beautiful iridescent look to it. Kind of a shimmer and shine, super easy to use. It comes in all of these beautiful colors. There's 12 total. Fun pinks and corals, a couple shades of blues, this fun yellow, greens, this vibrant purple, a fun gold, a black, and then of course the white. I wanna show you how I was able to create different effects using different techniques on the Vicki Booten mixed media paper. So I'm gonna grab some mixed media paper and my spatula from Nouveau. Let's test a few of these beautiful colors out. I have my piece of Vicki Booten mixed media paper, and I have a fun small bubbles stencil from Dilusions, which has been well loved, as you can tell. This was my the one that I really enjoyed playing with, can you tell? I'm gonna use my Hefe Doodle memo tape to keep it in place because you're gonna to wanna to use something, whether it be a spray, an adhesive spray or tape or something to keep your stencil in place because the one thing I found with the paper glaze is that it is definitely thinner than what I was used to in some of the other pastes that I've used in the past. When you look at it, it is, it is very thin. You don't need a whole lot of it on your spatula to be able to get a beautiful coverage. What you're gonna do is you're just gonna take your spatula, which does a beautiful job of getting it in all of the little creases. If you go from different directions, it fills in nicely. And you can always scrape off any excess over the top, like so. You can go back in and kind of fill in the holes. Super easy to work with. You can scrape anything that's left over back into your jar. Always put the lid back on the jar to keep it from drying out. But when you lift it, look how beautiful. It's got that beautiful shine and iridescent look to it. And I went ahead and did some samples to show you of all the different colors to see how they reacted on white paper, black paper, and so forth so that you can kind of see up close how that actually looks. So let's take a look at each of the beautiful colors. The first color we're gonna look at of the Picket Fence Paper Glaze is the Peony Pink. It is this beautiful, iridescent, shimmery pink that is absolutely stunning on both white and black. So I did some testing and I wanted to show you how it dries. Look at how fun that iridescent shine is. This is what it looks like on black paper. I also tried wetting it down and taking a wet brush and brushing it back and forth to see what it would do on watercolor paper. It's pretty as well. It gives this just kind of a light shimmer. It would be really pretty to do backgrounds with. The next thing I tried was just with a regular brush and painting it on the mixed media paper. It's a little thicker. It's still kind of a little see-through. You can kind of still see through some in some parts of the white, but it has that beautiful iridescent shimmer to it. And that is straight with no water or anything. Then I realized the magic potion in all of this was the different colors that you can mix it with. And I loved the white. The white intrigued me from day one. And it is called Snowdrop White. And it looks like this. And it's just a plain iridescent white. But when you mix the two together, it goes from this bright, bright pink to this subtle 
muted pink, kind of a pastel pink, but it still has that beautiful iridescent sheen. So I'm gonna show you quickly how to do that. We're gonna scoop a little bit of white onto our mat. You always wanna work on some sort of mat to protect your surface. And when you're done using it, you definitely wanna seal it back up. Be sure before you put your tool in the next color to wipe it off. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take just a teeny bit of the peony pink, less pink than there is white. And we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna mix the two together. So it goes from this bright pink out of the jar to this really pretty pastel pink. And if you want it darker, add more pink. If you want it lighter, add less pink or more white. And literally it just scoops up as easy as can be off of your mat. We're gonna go ahead and add the Dress My Craft stencil to the top of one of the mixed media pieces of paper. So it has this fun crackle look to it, like broken glass. We're gonna put it over the top. We're just gonna add the paste over the top of the crackle. Scrape off any of the excess, it works beautifully. And these tools also help to give it a nice solid base. Look how beautiful the pattern is showing through with that light pink. And as you can see right here, I didn't use any tape or spray to keep my paper down. And you can see where it kind of soaked in underneath in certain areas. So definitely tape your paper down. But look at how beautiful this is. Let's just put some swishes on the paper. You definitely want to clean up your station after you're done with each color because it does dry quickly. Look how pretty that is. That's just adding white. So beautiful. So make sure you put the lids back on your paste when you're done and definitely clean all of your supplies before you go to the next project because it does dry quickly and it does stick on your stencil. So you're going to want to clean your stencil with warm water and soap. The next color I want to show you is Ocean Poppy. It's this beautiful teal shade with a bunch of shimmer in it. Let's take a look at each of them separately. The first one I did was on white, straight out of the jar. So it has this beautiful teal iridescent color. Then I tried it on black and it looks like this on black. Isn't that pretty? Then I took my paintbrush and I just painted it on from the jar back and forth. Gives it a nice fun shimmer, make great backgrounds. This one I took a wet brush and added water first and then added a little bit of the ocean poppy to my brush and just swished it back and forth to kind of give it more of a watercolor effect, which is pretty as well. But this is my favorite. I took the white as well and I added a little bit of the ocean poppy with the white and look at this light blue like kind of a baby blue and that beautiful shimmer. The next color I'd like to share with you is this beautiful marigold orange and it has a more of a coral color to it. Can you see the shimmer inside of there? It's so pretty. Let's take a look at how it looks directly out of the jar on white. So it's this beautiful coral orange color with lots of shimmer. If you look at the black, it totally gives it a different effect. Isn't that something? Absolutely stunning. Here it is brushed right out of the jar with just a regular brush, no water added. It dries really quickly, so you gotta work fast. This I laid down water first and took a little bit on my brush and that was the effect I got. So pretty, just a fun watercolor blend. This one, I added white to it as well. It has that muted, beautiful, light coral color. So fun. Then I decided, well, what if I added a little bit of gold? And that's the color you get. 
so beautiful almost a rose gold or this is kind of a brassy gold when you add the two together it looks like a light rose gold which is so pretty so don't be afraid to kind of mix and match I just kept testing things and the more I tested the more I liked it so I highly encourage you to give it a shot pick a couple colors and have fun playing the next color I want to share is the daffodil yellow and it is a really, really bright yellow. If I'm being 100% honest, I'm not a huge yellow fan. So I thought, well, I'm going to get the yellow because I can see some fun uses and techniques with it. But I wasn't really all that crazy about it. And then I started working with it and went, oh my goodness. Look at the bright, beautiful yellow. This is it on white, which is pretty. But check it out on black. This sold me 100% absolutely stunning and I put my tape down and I ran it accidentally over the edge of the tape and I gently pulled my tape off and look at it stayed so you could easily incorporate that into a card edge wouldn't that be pretty now I taped it I didn't use spray and I wasn't as careful as maybe I should have been and I got a little bit of bleeding underneath the stencil so I might try using spray next time. I'm such a huge fan of tape, like the removable tape. I don't typically use the spray, but you might want to try it in with these particular types of paste because it definitely um, is thinner than anything I've ever worked with, which was fun and a different technique totally. This one is used right out of the bottle with a brush. Beautiful shimmer. This is with the white added. So you go from this bright yellow to this kind of subtle baby yellow. Wouldn't it be beautiful on a baby card or on a, baby, on a layout for a baby? And then again, I tried it on my watercolor paper and this is just watered down with a brush. The next color I'd like to share with you is the leaf green, which has this beautiful green shimmer to it as well. Here it is on white. And I didn't use the spray to adhere my stencil down, so it kind of leaked underneath the stencil. So I highly recommend using the spray as well. Or be really careful how you go about putting on the, uh, the paper glaze to your stencil. But look at the beautiful shimmer and shine. That's on white. Love the way it looks on black. Isn't that pretty? This is the one that is with a brush straight out of the jar. And this is what it looks like mixed with the white. Kind of that light minty green, which is so pretty. And this is on the watercolor paper with just strokes of water back and forth. Testing different types of stencils, mixing and matching with the white or the gold or adding a little black to see what each color will do because the more I played the better I liked it. The next paper glaze color I'd like to show you is the fern green. It has this beautiful, almost looks like a gold undertone as you kind of turn it in the light. Not sure you can see that on film, but it has this beautiful shimmer of gold as you turn it. So pretty. And I left these two together. This is what the stencil looks like on white and then on black. But if you can see in the middle, I taped the two together and I just ran the whole stencil over the two pieces and I let it dry and I took the tape off and I was able to keep them together like this. So it does dry, it's pliable. As you can see, it's not cracking or breaking. It's kind of got like a, I don't know, like a latex material in it or something to allow you to do that. So if you wanted to add something fun off the edge of your piece of paper to use for a card or whatever, you could easily do that. And I'm just going to trim them up and use them on different cards as I go. But I wanted to do this and show you first how everything looked. This is it right out of the bottle with a paintbrush. So pretty. 
Look at how pretty that is with a little bit of the white mixed in. It almost has, I don't know, kind of a slate gray undertone to it. So beautiful. And then this is on watercolor paper with a little bit of water. And that is the fern green. The next color is succulent green, and it tends to be more of a teal color to me than a true green. Absolutely beautiful with the iridescent shimmer to it. This is what it looks like on white. It's absolutely gorgeous on black. I kind of think I'm liking most of these a lot on black. Here it is straight out of the bottle, brushed onto the mixed media paper. Here it is mixed with the white. Kind of gives it that light pastel color, which is so pretty. And then used like watercolor. Absolutely stunning. The one thing that this taught me is that bust out your stencils and try them because every time I chose a different stencil, I kind of challenged myself to see what it could do and how much I liked it and the differences in shape and in the, the larger spaces, how that worked versus the smaller spaces, as well as the thinness or thickness of the stencil itself. I got to learn a whole lot more about my stencils doing this process. And I highly encourage you, if you have stencils that you haven't tried yet, this is a great way to bust them out and kind of break them in. The next color I want to share with you is the Cornflower Blue. It's this bright, bold, iridescent blue that is absolutely stunning. This is what it looks like on the white, which is so beautiful, but it's even more beautiful on the black. I left the piece in the middle so you could see how you could easily put two pieces of paper together and have it on a card and join it that way or make a hinge with it because I think that would last because it, it's not going anywhere. I'm giving it a good tug and it's not pulling apart. So you could easily make that your hinge. How fun would that be? This is it directly from the jar on paper with a brush. This is the cornflower blue mixed with the snowdrop white. It gives you this stunning light blue. Wouldn't that be beautiful for a baby card or a texture on the back of a baby layout? Absolutely stunning. And this is what it looks like on watercolor paper with a water brush. The next color is the agapanthus purple. And I'm not sure if I'm saying that correctly but I love this purple. Purple is my favorite color anyway, so this is just so beautiful and iridescent and sparkly. Here's what it looks like on white. Absolutely beautiful. And then the black. Some colors look better on white. Some look so much better on black. I kind of like the purple on the white a lot this time. Again, you could easily use it hinged together. How fun. Here is it right out of the bottle with a brush, no water added. And here we added the snowdrop white, this light purple color. The white added to any of the colors totally gives you so many more options. And this is the paper glaze used as a watercolor background. The next color that I used was golden rose. And it is this bright, beautiful gold color that looks beautiful on both white and black paper. Here it is on the white, as well as the black. Love the shimmer. It's fun right out of the bottle. as well as adding a little bit of the white to it. I love the second color that this creates. Kind of a rose gold kind of look. Very beautiful. 
and then the paper glaze used as watercolor. I think I'd like to try this with each of the colors to see what a little bit of gold would do to the different colors of green or blue or even the purple. Maybe add in a little bit of white and then a touch of gold. I'm kind of anxious to try that. The one thing I did notice is I need to clean the edges of my jar because it dries so quickly. Sometimes it's hard to get the lid back open. So I highly recommend just wiping your jar lid off. The next color in the Paper Glaze collection is the Black Pansy. And it has this deep, rich black tone to it with just a hint of shimmer. Look at how beautiful it is on the white. I love the black on black effect as well. How fun is that? Great for cards, for backgrounds, layouts. This is with just right out of the jar with a brush. I love the slate gray when I added the black with a little bit of white. So pretty. And it you can see the shimmer and shine a little bit more when it's not quite so dark. So you can actually see the shimmer more in this gray color than you could even on the black itself. And then used as watercolor. And I must confess, I saved the best for last. From Picket Fence, the paper glaze has these beautiful, bright, rich colors. And any color you choose and mix with the white itself transforms the color into something so beautiful. But I wasn't sure how it would actually look by itself. So I tested it white on white. And it is beautiful for a subtle background. I'm thinking this would be stunning for like the background of a wedding card. It's got the beautiful shimmer, but it's really subtle with the right stencil. That would be absolutely stunning. But then you put it on the black. Oh my goodness, look at that. The shimmer, the shine, it pops on the black. Definitely, probably my favorite one in the whole set because it has so much versatility. Are interested in trying one particular color, maybe your favorite color, I highly recommend getting one in the Snowdrop White as well because it opens up so much more as far as the things you can do with it and the shades you can get out of it. I hope this video has inspired you to break out your stencils and enjoy playing with the paper glaze from Picket Fence. If you're interested in purchasing the paper glaze, I've put a link in the description below. I'm Amy Sonneman. Thank you for joining me for a little paper mischief today. I hope you have a wonderful day.